Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can use CapCut to edit your videos. CapCut is completely free video editing software, and it's actually really good. It's made by the company ByteDance, and you might have heard of them before. They're also the company behind the popular app TikTok. So let's just say that they know a thing or two about pulling together a really good video. CapCut has all of your standard editing functionality, and it's really, really easy to use. You have all of the essentials. You can trim and split clips. You can add text. You can add transitions, effects, music, and so much more. What I really like about CapCut is you also gain access to a lot of advanced editing functionality that you won't even find in a lot of paid video editing software. For example, if I want to remove the background behind me, I could just click my mouse or press my finger, and the background's now gone. And you can even do that without a green screen. You can also enhance the way you look. Here, for example, I gave myself a slimmer nose. In this video, we're going to start by just looking at the basics, and then we'll look at some of the more advanced functionality as we pull together a commercial for the Kevin Cookie Company. To follow along, I've included sample clips down below in the description. That way you can play with the software as well. By the end of this video, my goal is that you will be proficient in editing videos in CapCut. Let's check this out. To install CapCut on your phone, head to the following website, and then you can download through either the App Store or the Play Store depending on what type of device you have. You can also use CapCut directly in your web browser. Simply head to the following website, and then you can click on the button that says Get Started for Free, and that drops you directly in the editor. The only downside with using the web is you have to upload all of your clips before you can start pulling together your video. If, instead, you prefer using the desktop, but you just want to edit the clips all just directly on your computer, you can also download a desktop app for either Windows or Mac, and you can download that on this website. Now, irrespective of which experience you decide to use, you'll get all of the same types of features and functionality. In this video, I'm going to use the Android experience, and that's identical to either the iPhone or the iPad. But if you decide to use the web experience or the desktop app, it will look just a little bit different. When you first install CapCut, you'll land here on the Start page, and you have a number of different options here. Right over here, we can create a new project, and in a moment we'll do this. Over on the right-hand side, we also have the option for Camera, and with this, you can either take photos or videos, and then you can use that as part of a project. Down below, we also have another option called Shortcut, and here you can upload, a, let's say, a photo or a video, and then you could very quickly pull together a video using various templates. Down below, you also have recent projects that you've worked on. So this is a quick way to get back to your projects. You simply click on that, and that'll open it up. To edit details of any of your projects, you can click on the ellipsis, and here you can back it up, rename, duplicate, or delete. So you have a few different options there. Right over here, we see that all of these files are local, so these are all stored on my device. If instead I want to store these files in the cloud, I can set that up over here. The benefit of setting it up in the cloud is you have a backup off of your device. Also, if you want to work on this project on, let's say, your desktop or maybe on the web or another device, you can very easily do that. Now, we have a commercial to pull together for the Kevin Cookie Company, so let's click into a new project. This now drops us on a page where we can select media to use as part of our video project. Currently, this view shows me all of the different video files that are on my device, but right up here, I could also switch the filter to all of the photos that are on my device. Also, if I want, I could also incorporate stock videos into my project. I'll go back to videos and let me select a few of these different video clips. Now, once again, if you want to follow along, you can get all of these same video files. Simply click into the description. Here, I'll select this clip of the oven, and let me get a few of these different clips of milk pouring into the glass. I'll select this one. Let's go with this, this one, and we'll go with that one. Now, I've selected these six different video files. Next, I'll click on Add. 
This now drops us into the main editor view, and this is also where we're going to spend most of our time. This is where we can pull together the video and also tell our story. Now, before we start editing and looking at what all these different controls are, if you wanna get back to the main screen, up in the top left-hand corner, you can click on the X, and it'll automatically save the project as you're working on it. Over here on the left-hand side, I can see this recent project. And once again, you simply click on it and that'll bring you right back into the project. Back now within the main editor view, there's one setting that you might wanna just change right up front. And down on the bottom bar, let's click on the one titled Format. When you tap into that, here you'll see all of these different formats that you can set. These are the dimensions of the video. So let's say that maybe you're pulling together a video for TikTok. Here, you'll want to select 9 by 16. And when I choose that, here you see that the dimensions up above have adjusted. Or maybe you're pulling together a video for Instagram. In that case, maybe you want to go with one by one. And here, once again, we see that the dimensions have updated. Now, I just want to pull together a standard 16 by 9 video. So down below, I'll select this one. It also happens to be the same as fit. Now, this looks good, so I'll click on the back button over here. Let's now focus our attention on this area right down here. This is referred to as the timeline, and this shows us all of the different clips that we imported from that import media screen. And it's in the order in which I selected those clips. So if you remember, I selected the oven clip first. So it also shows up first on my timeline, then the milk pouring, and so on. To zoom in and out on the timeline, you can use two fingers. You could either expand or contract, and that'll either show you more or less of the timeline. I can also use my finger to move forward through the timeline, or I can use my finger to move back through the timeline. And you'll notice as I move forward in the timeline, the preview up above also changes. This white line here is referred to as the playhead, and wherever I position the playhead, it'll show me that current point on my timeline, right up here in the preview area. On the far right-hand side of the timeline, you see this plus icon, and this allows me to add additional videos or photos to my timeline. And when I click on this, it'll add those new items where my playhead is on the timeline. Now, I want to add some files at the end of the timeline. So here, I'll zoom out, and then I'll move all the way to the end of my timeline. And right here, I'll click on the plus icon. Now, this brings me back into that import media screen. And one nice thing, here I see this text that says imported. So this lets me know that I've already used this video in my project. Now, I want to pull in two new videos. So right here, I'll select this one and I'll select the video of the Cookie Monster. With those two selected, here I'll click on add. And once again, because my playhead was here at the very end, it's added those two clips to the very end. You can adjust the position of clips when you're initially selecting them in that import screen, or you could also adjust the position after the fact. So here, this third clip here, let's say I wanna move it up one position. Here, I could simply press and hold on it, and now I could place it in a new position on my timeline. Here, I'll move it to the second position and then release. I wanna start making some edits to this video. I think some of these clips are just a little bit long. I'll zoom in a little bit on the timeline just so I can see things a little bit better. Here, when I click on the first clip, when I click on it, here I can see the duration of this clip. And here it says that it's close to six seconds. That's a little bit too long. I don't know if that's gonna hold my viewer's attention. Here I can move to the beginning of the clip and you see that I haven't yet opened the oven yet. Here I'll play it. And there you see the oven door opens and I want the clip to start right as the oven door is opening. So maybe right at about, let's say this point. With this clip selected, you'll notice that there are these white handles in the front and at the end. I can use these to trim the length of this clip. So here I'll select this point right here and I could drag it in. One thing to notice as I'm dragging this, you'll notice that the preview up above shows me the current point that this handle is at. So I want it to be right in the middle of the action as this oven door is opening and I think that's a good spot right there. Now at the end, I also want to trim this. I really want the clip to be probably about three seconds, so about half the length. Here too, I could adjust the end point of the clip. And there the cookies are already out of the oven, so I wanna make sure I cut that out. Here, I'll go right to about here as you see the cookie tray come out. Now if I go back and play it, the clip's a lot shorter and I think this works better. 
On this next clip here, when I click on that here, I can see that it's about almost 21 seconds. And I don't think anyone wants to watch milk pouring into a glass for 21 seconds. So here, just like I did before here, I'll take this trim handle and here I could adjust it. I think I just want the milk well, right about in the middle of the glass. And here I'll also trim the end right to about that point. And so maybe we get it down to about, let's say maybe about two seconds or so. I think that's a good length. And here with this third clip here, this is also almost 23 seconds. So let me adjust this as well. And this is a sequence. So here, if I go back just a little bit, we see that the glass is about halfway full at this point. And I want this clip to pick up from about the halfway point. So that's right about there. Here, I'll click on the clip and let me adjust this trim handle right to about there. And here, I'm also going to shorten this clip. And let's go with maybe about two seconds or a little under two seconds. And now when I play it, that sequence looks pretty good. With this next clip here, I wanna keep a portion of the beginning where this one cookie falls, and then I also wanna keep one of the cookies falling at the end. But when I click on this clip, if I just use the standard trim handles, that'll trim the beginning or the end. But here in this case, I just wanna keep the beginning and the end, and I want to cut out the middle. So how do we do that? Well, here, when I have the clip selected, down on the bottom bar, you'll see all of these different options. And one of these allows me to split the clip all the way over on the left-hand side. So let's say right here, I just want this first cookie falling in. So right at about there, and then I wanna cut it right there. So here, once again, I could click on this clip, and I'll select split. And that now cuts the clip at the point where the playhead is. So I now have two clips. And here at the end, let's see, I wanna keep one more of these cookies falling, maybe this one right here. And I want it to start right at that point. So once again, the playhead is right here. I could click on split and that'll cut the clip right at that point. And here I'll go towards the end and then I wanna cut it there. Now I could use the trim handle or I could simply split it once again. Here I'll zoom in just a little bit more. And I wanna get rid of this last portion right here. So with that clip selected, here I could go down and click on delete. And I also want to cut out this middle portion. So once again, with this area selected, I'll go down to my controls and here I could delete that. So now we have the video sequence with one cookie falling and then the other cookie falling. That's perfect. If we look up at the preview area here, you'll see it's the cookie with the chocolate on the bottom that's falling into the milk glass. But here when I look at the timeline, that cookie falls first followed by another cookie. So I want to shift the order. And that's no problem, we did this earlier. Here I simply press and hold on that clip and here I could reorder it. I'll place it just before it goes into the milk glass and this is now in the proper order. Looking over on the right hand side, I have this one clip of me eating one of the cookies and I'm not really sure if I want to include it. So right here, I can click on the clip and down below here, I can delete that from my timeline. But on second thought, it's probably good to have a face to associate with the Kevin Cookie Company brand. And that is Kevin after all. Over here on the right hand side, I can undo that deletion. And when I click on that, that brings that clip back. Also to the right of that, I could also redo a change. This video is starting to come together nicely. If I want to preview what it all looks like, over here in the preview area, I can click on the play icon and that'll start playing my video. And here I could pause it once again. Over on the far right hand side of the preview area, I can also view my video in full screen. This way I could use all of my screen real estate. And here you can see the beautiful cookies use up your entire screen. Here in the bottom right hand corner, I can click on this icon and that brings me back to the standard preview view. You might have noticed that between all of the different clips on our timeline, there's this white icon. This icon allows us to add a transition between clips. Here currently when I play the video and it jumps from one clip to the next, it's currently just a hard cut and there is no transition in place. Here I could go all the way back to the beginning. I'll zoom out a little bit and let me go to the beginning of my video. And here once again, you can see the hard cut between my two clips. Now I think ideally I'd have some type of nice transition there. So here I'll click on this icon and when I click on this, this opens up these controls down below where I can preview all of these different transitions. And there are lots and lots of different options to choose from. In fact, I can go over and see even more options. And here I can jump into these different categories to see even more transitions. 
So you have lots and lots of different options. Here, let's click into camera and maybe I could add, let's say a spin transition between these clips. And when I click on this transition, I can preview it up above. So here, once again, I could click on it or let's click on this one and we can preview what that transition looks like. Also down below, I can adjust the duration of that transition. So if I want it to take less time or if I want it to go on a little bit longer. Also in the bottom left-hand corner, if I really like this transition, I can click on apply to all and that'll add it as a transition throughout my entire video. Now I'd recommend not overdoing it with transitions. They can be a little bit annoying, but they can add a really nice effect. Now, I think this is a good transition right here. I'll click on the check mark and that's now applied it. Back on the main timeline now, you'll notice that the icon has changed, indicating that there's a transition at this point in the video. The video is looking really nice, but I want some music to go along with it. And I actually happen to already be in the audio or the music view, but if you're not here yet, or you ever find yourself in one of these menus, over on the left hand side here, I could click on the back button and here that brings me back to the top level controls. And once again, I want to add audio. So here I could click on add audio or here I could go back and I could also just click on audio down here. And that brings me to that same view. Within the audio view, I have several different options. Here I could add sounds. So let's say I wanna add some music to this video and that's what I wanna do. But you also have all of these other options. Here you could add effects. So let's say you wanna add some sound effects. Maybe with this milk pouring into the glass, I wanna have a pouring sound. I could add that here. Also, there's something called extracted. This is where you can pull out or extract the audio from a video that's on your phone. So maybe a video has some music on it and you wanna use that in this project, you can extract that using this. And on the far right hand side, and this is a really neat one, you can do a voiceover for your video. So you could record your voice and then you can position it where you want it. Now, once again, I just wanna add some music. So over on the left-hand side, I'll click on sounds. Within sounds, up on top, I can add stock music to my video. So here, for example, I can click into hip hop and here we see all of these different songs that I can use in my project. Here I could click on back. If you sign in with TikTok, you could also use popular music as part of your video. Now, I wanna use some music that's already on my phone. So here, I'll click on this folder icon, and right here, I can click on from device. And here I see that there's one song on my device. I'll select this one, and then I'll click on this plus icon. It's now inserted the song onto my timeline, and it placed it right at the position of my playhead. Now, just like with all the different video clips on the timeline, here too, I could also press and hold, and then I can move this to a new position. Now, I want the music to start right when the video starts, so here I'll move it right to the beginning. And also similar to what we could do with video clips, here I can click on the sound file, and here you'll see those same trim handles appear. So maybe I want the music to start eh, maybe a few seconds in. I'll click on that, and here I'll drag it in, and let's position it right at about there. And here, once again, I can click, I could press and hold, and then drag this to the beginning. I'll zoom out a little bit, and you'll notice that the song goes on for far longer than the video. So I wanna trim this whole end portion. Now, I could go all the way to the end of the song and then trim it, but an easier way is I could simply split and then delete the end. So just like we did with the video clips, here I could simply click on this music file, and when I click on this, you'll notice all of these different controls down below. And here's that same split option that we had with our video files. So let's say I wanna trim it right at the end here where the Kevin Cookie Company text appears. I'll click on split and let me delete this end portion. Here I'll select this and down below I can click on delete. Here once again, I'll click on the sound file. And when I click on this, once again, we see all of these different controls down below. So I could adjust things like the volume. I could have it fade. I could apply different voice effects. And I have several other options as well. And once again, you get these options whenever you click on any type of file on your timeline. So here as an example, I will click on this video file. And here I also get all of these options down below. And there are many, many different options. And it's well worth exploring what you can do down here. And in fact, when I scroll over, we see even more over on the side. 
So you can apply lots and lots of different effects to your different files. With this sound file down below, I want it to fade out at the end. So once again, when I select this, I see all these controls down below and there's an option for fade. When I click on this here, I could adjust the fade in duration. I want the music to start right at the beginning, so no need to fade it in, but I do want to fade it out. Down here with the fade out duration, let me add maybe, let's say two to maybe two and a half seconds or so of fade out. Now, when I go to the very end here, I'll play it. And you'll notice that the music fades out very nicely. As this video is playing, these various clips up here also have sound associated with them, but I just want the music to play on its own and I don't wanna hear any of the sound from these clips. Over here on the left-hand side, there's the option to mute clip audio and that'll mute all of the audio from these different video files. I'll click on this and that way it'll ensure that I just hear the music down below. You might have noticed at the very end of this video, when we show the Kevin Cookie Company text and logo, there's no website listed here. We've done all this work convincing people how good these cookies look. We need to show a website so people can order these cookies. Now, first I want to exit out of the fade view. So down below, I'll click on this check mark and I wanna get back to the main navigation. So over here in the bottom left-hand corner, I'll click on the back arrow and the back arrow once again. To insert a website, I need to insert some text. Right here in the center, I see the option for text. And when I click on that, I have several different options. I just want to add basic text, so I'll click on add text. And here I can now type in my text. I'll type in the website for the Kevin Cookie Company. Now that I've typed in my website URL, I can customize what this looks like. And CapCut gives me so many different options. Down below, I can choose the font, and here we see that there are many different fonts to choose from. Here, I could also choose the style. I could choose one of these presets, or I could customize it to my heart's content. Right up here, I could also choose different effects, and here we see that there are many different options, and once again, many different categories. I could even insert my text into a bubble, and this is a fun one to experiment with. Over on the far right-hand side, I can also apply an animation to my text. Within animation, once again, just like all of the other tabs, you have many different options. Over here, you can set the in animation. So how does the text animate when it's coming in? Also, what does the animation look like when the text is leaving or the out animation? Or you could have your animation continue to loop. Now, right down below, you can see all of the different animation options. And there are many, many different options here. You can explore some of these to see what works the best. Now, I just want a really simple animation, and I think this one called Sunrise works well. There it just animates from the bottom. Down below, you can also adjust how long the animation plays for. So do you want it to be a little bit quicker, or do you want it to take a little bit longer? Now, I'll go with about, let's say, 0.5 seconds. I think that's a good amount of time. Now that I'm all done customizing my text, I've picked an animation, I'll click on this check mark right up here. Now that we've inserted the text, we can see it right here on the timeline and currently it's selected. Now, just like with an audio file or a video clip, here I can press and hold on the text and then I can move it to a new position. I'll place it right here so it overlays my ending clip. When I also click on the text, you'll notice that I get those same handles that we get for other objects that I can select. So here I could extend how long the text appears for or here I could shorten it at the end. I just wanted to overlay this entire clip, so I'll place it like that. With the text selected, you'll also notice on the bottom, I get context specific actions. So here, just like we could do with video or audio, you could split the clip. Here, I could also jump back to styles, or here I could jump back to animations or effects. I also have some new options here as well. You can convert your text to speech, and that's a really neat one to experiment with. Also, all the way over on the right-hand side, there's also something called tracking. So let's say you have some action happening on your screen above. You can have the text track that action. So some really neat options. Now, of course, I don't want my text to just overlay my logo and my company name. I wanna position it at the bottom. So with the text selected on the timeline, you'll notice that I get these borders or lines around the text up in the preview window. I can click on the text up here and I can drag it to a new position. And I'll place it right here in the middle at the bottom. 
Now, of course, it is a little big, especially compared to the company name right up above. I just want it to be a subtle, small URL on the bottom. Right over here, I can also adjust the size, and here I'll shrink it just a little bit, and once again, I'll move it towards the bottom. I think this text overlay looks pretty good now. Along with including a text overlay, you can also include an image overlay or even a video overlay. So let's say you're recording maybe a gaming video and you wanna include some commentary on top. Or maybe it's a reaction video and you wanna include video on top. You could very easily do that. On the timeline, let's move all the way over to the beginning. And I want to include the Kevin Cookie Company logo image overlay on top of this video clip. To include an image overlay, let's go back to the top level menu. Here, I'll click on the back button. And right over here, we have the option for overlay. And let's click on this. When we click on it here, there is a plus icon that says add overlay. Once again, let's click on that. Here, I can choose what I want to overlay. And by default, it brings me to photos. But once again, I can also overlay one video on top of another video. Here, I will click into photos. And once again, I just want to include the Kevin Cookie Company logo. I will select this and then click on add. It's now inserted my logo, but this is massive. I mean, I want people to be able to see me taking the cookies out of the oven. With the logo selected on the timeline down below, you'll notice that I have this border around the logo. That means that I can adjust it. So I can make it bigger or smaller simply by using two fingers. Here, I'll make it just a little bit smaller. You could also rotate and you can move it to a new position. Here, I'll place it at the top. Just like with any other object on the timeline, when I have this selected, here I can trim how long I want this to appear for. Now, I just want it to appear in this oven scene, so I'll trim it right to that point. Also, with this image overlay selected, you'll notice down below I have all of these different contextual actions that I can choose from. So let's say, for instance, maybe I want to add an animation to my image overlay. I could do that. Or maybe I want to apply some filters. Maybe I want to adjust the way the colors look. I have all of those options. One thing to keep in mind, and this might be a little bit hidden, but you can also scroll over and that exposes even more actions that you can take. I'm satisfied with the logo just appearing right there without any special effects applied. When I look down the timeline, one thing you might notice is here the milk pouring looks very bright and vibrant. But when I go on to the next clip, this one just looks a little bit darker and dimmer. Ideally, I want the colors to match a little bit more closely. So here I can click on this clip. And once again, just like we saw with the image overlay, here I have all of these contextual actions down below. And for this one, I want to adjust the colors. I'll click on adjust right here. Within adjust, here I can adjust all of the different colors of this clip. So I have many different options. Now, I think it could be just a little bit brighter. And the first option here is called brightness. Here, I'll move it up just a little bit more. That's already looking better. Also, maybe I increase the saturation a little bit. I'll click into that and let me increase that just a tiny bit. I'll click on the check mark. And now when we compare those two clips, they look more consistent. As I look down the timeline, there's a video clip of me eating a cookie. And I think that's a nice addition. But the blue background's a little bit uninspired. I think I could do something better there. Now, just like we've been doing with many of these different video clips, I'll click on this. And once again, that shows me all of these different actions down below. And for this specific clip, I'm thinking maybe I can remove the background and put something in place of it. Maybe a cookie factory. That'd be a little bit more fun. Down below in all of these actions, there's one option called remove background. I'll click on that. Within remove background, I have two options. I can simply remove the background and that uses some AI tech to get rid of the background regardless of what the current background is and it'll just keep the person. There's also the option for chroma key. This will remove, let's say, a green screen or a blue screen. So that would work well in this case, but I wanna use the remove background tech. Let's click on this option. And there it's automatically removed the background. And it actually does a pretty good job. You'll notice there's a little bit of blue left behind, but overall, it's pretty good. It's now removed the background and I wanna add something more fun behind me. I don't just want a black background. Over here, I'll click on this back button. And here, I'll click on back again, and then back once again. And over here on the top level menu, I can set a canvas for my video project. I'll click on that. And here I could set a color, a background, or a blur. Here, I'll select background. 
and I could choose one of these preset backgrounds or I could even choose my own background. Now, of course, I have my own background. I'll click on this and here we see Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. I'll select that and look at that. It now places that as my background. That's pretty cool. The background now looks pretty fantastic, but I also want to touch up the way I look. I mean, why not present your best self? Down below on the timeline, I'll click on the video clip. And once again here, I can see all of these different contextual actions. And there's one called enhance. Let's click on that. And here I have a few different ways that I can enhance myself. Here I can enhance my face, my body, or here I could reshape. Since it mainly shows my face, let's select face. The first option is to retouch. So this way I can give myself smoother skin. And look at that, all of those pores are disappearing. I look about five to 10 years younger right there. I could also adjust the shape, the eyes, or maybe here I'll slim my nose down a little bit. And here I could adjust it and look at that. It automatically detects the nose and then it adjusts the size. So maybe I go right there. And here I could also brighten my face. So let's increase the brightness here. That looks pretty good. And also over here, I could even whiten my teeth. So here I'll increase that up and look at those teeth become a little bit whiter. Now it misses the teeth a little bit. It also gets the cookie, but overall this tech is so, so impressive. Once I'm satisfied with all of the changes, I'll click on the check mark. Now I also want to add just a little bit of motion to this clip, maybe zoom in a little bit, or maybe even pan it a little bit. To do that, we can use something called keyframes. To apply a keyframe here, I'll click on the clip right here. And over on the right hand side, you'll see this diamond icon with a plus symbol. This allows you to insert a keyframe. So what is a keyframe? A keyframe allows you to define the state of the video at that specific point in time. And you can place multiple keyframes. Now, if that doesn't make that much sense, I think you'll understand it better with an example. Let's say that I want to zoom in as I'm eating this cookie. So here I'll go to the beginning of the clip right there and I'll click on the keyframe icon. On the timeline, if I zoom in a little bit here, you'll now see that keyframe and I can move to the end of the clip and here I'll place another keyframe right there. So I have two keyframes, but nothing is yet happening. So I'll go to this second keyframe, then I'll click on the video up above and I'll zoom in on it. So there I'll zoom in. Now, if I go back to the beginning of the clip and I'll play it at this point, here we notice that it zooms in on me as this clip is playing. So it goes from this specific state to this specific state in a linear fashion. You can also adjust how it zooms in. So it doesn't just have to be a straight line zoom. With this clip selected down below, once again, we have all of these different contextual actions. And here, if I scroll over all the way to the end, we see an option for graphs. I'll click on that. By default, it's set to none. So this just means that it's a straight line zoom. But here I could have it ease in or I could have it ease out. You could even have it come in, back up, and then go in again. So you have all of these different options that you can apply. I'll select the option called ease in one. And there we can see how it eases in a little bit more nicely than just a straight line. I feel like we've been looking at a close up of my face enough, so let's now move on. I'll go to the very beginning of the timeline and I wanna add one finishing touch to me taking these cookies out of the oven. And this is something that CapCut really excels at. You can add some pretty fancy effects to your video. So here, as I reach in the oven to pull the cookies out, keep in mind I have no oven mitts on, so it's probably hurting my hands, but maybe I have magic hands. Down below, there's an option called effects. And when I click on that, I could add video effects or body effects. Now, maybe I want my hands to light up in a magical way. That's why I'm able to grab this cooking pan. I'll click on body effects. And here we have some trending body effects. You have full body surrounding headwear, but I want it to apply to my hands. I'll click on that. Now, the really cool thing here is CapCut automatically detects my hands and then it applies this effect to my hands. So maybe I'll select this shape trails too. And there you see how it added this magic around my hand as I'm pulling the cookies out. I'll click on the check mark right up here. And here you see that it added this effect on the timeline. Now, just like any other object, as we've been seeing this entire video, here I could click on the handles and I could trim it. So maybe I just want those magic trails to appear as I'm grabbing the cookies. Let's now check this out.
I think that's a really nice touch. This video is coming together really nicely, but there is one final thing that I want to do before I publish this. Here I'll zoom out on my timeline, and at the very end, you'll notice that there's this logo for CapCut. Now, I don't want that in our commercial. Here I could simply click on that, and right down below, I'll click on Delete, and that's now removed it. If you don't want to have to remember to remove it on your timeline, here I'll click on the X. You can click on the settings gear, and here you have the option to turn off the default ending. Here I could toggle that off, and then in the future, you won't have to remove that from your timeline. So that can help you save a little bit of time. I'll now click back into the project. I'm now all ready to publish this video. In the top right hand corner, I can click on this icon, and this allows me to choose the resolution. I originally filmed all of this at 4K, so here I'll select the top resolution. Also, I can decide what frame rate I want this to be in. Now, my original video was in 30 frames per second, so I'll leave it here. This all looks good. To the right of that, there's this up icon, and I can use this to render my video. When I click on that, that now exports my video. Once the video is done rendering, here I can see that it's now been saved to my device. Here, I could play it back to preview what it looks like. Also, down below, I could very quickly share this with others. I could share directly to TikTok, to WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, and I have some other options as well. All right, well, thank you so much for helping me pull together a commercial for the Kevin Cookie Company. We're probably gonna sell a lot of cookies. Hopefully also along the way, you learned how to edit videos using CapCut. To watch more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.